Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode 116, 116, and uh, sure glad you uh, joined us today. Today, I want to talk about homeschooling and my observations, and it's actually changed a little bit since I've talked about it before. And uh, so let's see how well I did this. First of all, uh, bless those people that are doing homeschooling. And so I want you to know that this is a, a positive note about homeschooling. Now there's drawbacks to it, but let's talk about what's going on. So if you follow or get a chance to watch uh, or listen to Good Talk Radio, we have a syndication called The Dr. Duke Show. It's a podcast that comes out once a week. It plays, uh, I think, at 4 o'clock Arizona time uh, on uh, Good Talk Radio. Now, Dr. Duke, uh, he is a professor at a university, and their show focuses on policies in the regular school districts and universities. And let me tell you, it's getting totally insane. And the school districts and universities seem to think that they are replacing parents and literally making decisions and doing things that they don't have to confront the parents to do it. And we're talking about whether it's uh, older kids and dealing with pregnancy or uh, uh, sex education to how to deal with all these new situations with cross genders and things like that. And of course, our uh, and they're starting at an age that most parents would go, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, uh, all those kinds of things should be talked about. But it, I really feel that it's something that it's, uh, should be done through the family. And, and it's not just that, but the, they're spending so much time in the school districts and universities on social issues more than teaching curriculum um, that our kids are not getting educated uh, uh, strongly in the basic things of math and reading and science and et cetera. And, and uh, we're, we're dropping the ball. And uh, uh, there's such an emphasis on degrees and business and all that stuff that they're forgetting about uh, how important uh, manufacturing and skills are and labor skills. And and uh, our kids are so uh, coddled that life is like it is in, in the United States and don't realize the whole world is not like us. And um, so that brings me to the RV industry or, or lifestyle where a lot of parents have been saying, our kids are doing great, and yes, they are dealing socially just fine with other kids and adults, and they're learning and, and soaking it in, and, and they're, uh, uh, the new uh, programs they have for homeschooling is amazing, and uh, it's not something you just you know do independently. You're involved in a network, and you do have to meet certain curriculum, and you, it is a measured thing. And... Uh, uh, I certainly, especially with the problems in the schools, the different states, the different uh, issues they may be having, whether it could be even drugs and gangs and problem um, uh, in schools, uh, funding, etc. And a lot of parents are going, I ain't putting my kids in that stuff. <laughs> and the state's not going to dictate to me when I'm going to te teach my kids sex education and whether, uh, and a pro or con, whether you support, uh, 
uh, cross gender or, or lesbian or gay uh, living, uh, you probably want to do that on your own terms and based on your family values and not have it forced on you uh, or even in our normal cu curriculum and and even our history, uh, I know that a lot of RVers are truly into American history. And that's one of the reasons like they like to travel to see the things that are uh, have happened in the past and see locations and, and unique historic points, uh, uh, places too, of, uh, of our history. And so traveling is a great mix of that. I mean, when you want to teach about you know, our American history, why not take your kids to Washington, D.C. and and, and actually show, show them what you're talking about and let them touch and feel it. And so, uh, yeah, what a tough, tough world parents are in nowadays. I, my, I don't, I, I don't know how I deal with it. My kids are all grown up. We didn't have this stuff. My kids did not have cell phones till high school. And that was just the flip phones back then. And uh, we didn't have social media. And when our schools got to be a little too rambunctious, you might say, we kept moving to the outskirts. And we were in Washington State. We, if you guys know Washington, we lived like in Kent, kind of near Renton, uh, all stuff. And as time went on, we ended up in Black Diamond. And if you know Washington, oh, we ended up in Enumclaw almost. And eventually down to Central Oregon and kept running away from the city developments, kind of social problems they were having with the schools. And we kept our kids... Uh, kind of out in the boonies where it kind of stayed calm, calm. They still had their problems, but it wasn't perfect. But I'm so grateful we did that. And, uh, but it's almost impossible today. And, uh, I don't know. It's I, for a while. I'm just thinking, you know, uh, the homeschooling is, uh, at many, a couple years ago, I talk about it and, uh, I was really concerned about the social aspects of it. Now I'm worried about the social aspects of private school and, and universities. So boy, parents, you've got it tough. So getting back to the RV industry, so many parents nowadays are teaching their kids, uh, on the road. Now, is there any problems with teaching on the road? <laughs> yeah, it depends on the parents. <laughs> Everything depends on the parents. And uh, parents, you need to be accountable. And and these people that are traveling and homeschooling their kids are, are, are definitely taking accountability for their children, teaching them uh, morals, teaching them structure, teaching them history, teaching them uh, the world, and uh, not living in a bubble, which is a lot of kid parents are doing that. The kids are in such a bubble. They have no clue what's going on around them. And so uh, I, I, I really am starting to believe that homeschooling is becoming uh, something that a lot of parents uh, need to find a way to support. Now, working parents, that's got to be tough. Now, if you have both of your parents, you know, both parents are working, trying to make it the ends meet, uh, homeschooling would be a real tough thing to do. Um, maybe raising your kids with a nanny that can also support homeschooling, uh, sounds costly, <laughs> but, uh, I can certainly see why folks with maybe a fixed income or some types of income on the road where, uh, one or, uh, both of the parents can be available to help with, uh, doing homeschooling. Uh, you may not be living the r r lavish lifestyle, but you'll have the uh, mindset of knowing that your kids are getting educated. So when it comes to the point that they become a little bit more uh, uh, mature, that they can make uh, positive and, and, and good choices and not live at home till they're 26. <laughs> That they actually know what they want to do and they actually know that, hey, I do want to get a degree in business or yes, I want to learn how to be a welder. Or, yes, I want to be a mechanic. Um, by then, I mean, that kind of lifestyle uh, between RV families on the road and homeschooling, I really think that we'd probably see some well-developed kids and uh, 
yeah, people going, well, Rob, you, that's not what you were saying about two years ago. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't until I started getting a lot more education about what's going on in our schools. And it's dis, it's a disgrace. Um, uh, yeah, you guys know I'm conservative. I, 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 but I do try to listen to the other side. I, I believe in debating and, and, and coming up with, uh, compromises and stuff like that. But it seems that our schools are getting pushed by a liberal logic that is some of it's okay, but some of it's going over the top and they're pushing for things that I think are way too soon for our kids to be exposed to. And a lot of these subjects are something that should be discussed and addressed in the family unit. And, uh, uh, it's insane. And, and I'm, trying to be open-minded about some of it that, uh, yeah, there's a, a new lifestyles out there and things like that. Um, that, uh, I don't, it, it needs to be, you need, we need to understand it and, and, and the kids need to be able to interpret it, but to have it, some things that are not actually scientifically proven in concepts like that, uh, and is, not my idea of education if it's just something that's more socially acceptable as it is having something scientifically, you know, I'll say it, boys and girls, you know, I, anything beyond that, show me the science. And, and, and if it isn't locked in on science, then maybe we shouldn't be teaching it. But you know, it's like religion. That's not locked in in science, you say, but it should be taught in the home, and that's a faith thing, and it's separate from the school. Uh, same thing with some of the social issues. Is it, is maybe a guidance packet to give to the parents to say, can you sit down with your parents and talk about these things? This is what is out here today, and uh, it should be something that everybody knows about. So there you go. There's my two cents worth about homeschooling. I hope it uh, opens people's eyes that parents are up against some real serious issues. And those that are taking on being homeschooled, schooling parents, <laughs> uh, I tip my hat to them. And uh, uh, God be with you because uh, that's a, not an easy way to go. And if you're going to do it, be serious about it. And really, I mean, it's your kids' education, their future. So uh, if you're going to invest in it like that, then do the best job you can. And uh, you, many of us will stand behind you. And uh, a great show, by the way, is S I watch SV Delos, which is uh, guys that travel on a sailboat. They don't have kids, but they deal with people that have kids that sail around the world. And... Uh, they have made observations that some of those kids are just over the top, wonderful kids, smart kids and open kids and can relate with their own age along with older adults and, and have wonderful behavior issues and really have a grasp of what the world's all about and hard work. So yeah, amazing stuff. So power to you parents. Do you have a dog? And do you carry pet waste bags with you? Are you tired of those tiny little bags that hardly go around your arm and are hard to turn inside out? Don't you wish you had a dog waste bag that was larger, deeper, and had handles to make it easy to turn inside out? Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags is that bag. They are larger, they are deeper, and they have handles. They're lemon scented, biodegradable, eco-friendly, and a darn right great product. Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags have the highest reviews on Amazon, but most of all they are high quality, leak proof, and durable. Go to Amazon right now or go to rangerrobpoopybags.com and get you a box today. The box is durable and also turns into a dispenser. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, designed to make picking up after your pet easy well there you go the earl ranger rob pet poopy bags they are a real thing they are awesome and you can find them on amazon just go to amazon type in 
Ranger Rob pet poopy bags or just poopy bags. And there you go. And they're under $10 and you get free shipping. Uh, you can also go to our website at rangerrobpoopybags.com and you can get them there. We have our own shopping cart too where you can get a discount of 10%. If you buy quantity, you can get free shipping after $30. Use the uh, discount code POOPY10. <laughs> That's all the Y. POOPY10 and it'll give you 10% off. So there you go. That's at rangerrobpoopybags.com. Moving on here, I uh, wanted to also let you know that RV Talk Radio is syndicated on Good Talk Radio. You can find episodes of RV Talk Radio on Saturdays and Sundays in the afternoons. Uh, just go to uh, goodtalkradio.com, check the schedule, and you can find uh, our show that way. You can also play our podcast, which is available uh, on any podcasting software uh, that's available on your cell phone. Just type in the search area. Um, RV Talk Radio. We've been there for years and just check it out. We've got lots of episodes, lots of funny stories. It's kind of cute to go way, 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 way back to the beginning to some of the first shows where you can see we're kind of struggling trying to figure out how to get our mojo. And then, uh, of course, we improved our event and uh, quite humorous. But uh, the show developed into... Uh, you know, we did the show while we were traveling, before we were traveling, after we've been traveling, uh, brought in different uh, guests. Uh, I think we've had Less Junk, um, More Journey. We've had uh, Freedom Theory. We've had uh, Dan and Jen. We've had uh, a can a r RV rental companies. Uh, we've had individual RVers that we've met that we uh, thought their stories were unique. So all kinds of different shows. And so uh, we've uh, we're been around a while. And, uh, we have a little different perspective. We're not trying to sell RV units. We're not trying to do RV repair thing. Uh, we do support uh, Ford Refrigeration. Uh, they got a great program for getting certified as an RV refrigeration repair person. And... Uh, I, I have a little message from that from them too. So here we go. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. Well, I want to speak a little bit more about model park model living. And the reason I want to bring it up is there's a lot of folks uh, in our age bracket that are kind of like, okay, I should work till I'm 65. Uh, maybe I should go to 69. And uh, they're, they're trying to calculate their lives of living the way they are today, um, whether it's five, 10 years before retirement. And, uh, you know, uh, some people, yeah, this is the house I want to be in or circumstances of different careers and stuff. People have had to move from house to house and uh, maybe they still have a mortgage, things like that. <clears throat> but, you know, the, the park model lifestyle, especially here in Arizona, is really something to consider. Um, as you get older, you give up a lot of your older hobbies, but you get new ones, too. And uh, your health is a little different. Maybe uh, you're, you got a two-story house, you know, and uh, as your health goes, maybe hips go, things like that. Maybe you want to get more of a Rambler-style house, so one level, less steps, things like that. Kind of silly to you know, kind of laugh at it now, but you know, maybe 15 years from now you won't be. So uh, park models. Interesting thing, they're 
very comfortable homes. And whether you're buying new or used, um, it all depends on your budget. What a practical way to go. Now, you can also, you know, the, the bad part is sometimes is you have to rent the land that it's on. And that can average between 4500 to probably close to 8000 a year. So, um, and then there's other places where you can buy the unit and the property. And uh, it's a really good way to get a very comfortable home. Yes, you're downsizing in size, but really one of the things that is a proven fact that if you minimize or reduce your stuff, the less stress you have. Life is actually easier. <coughs> Excuse me. And so uh, I urge these people that are coming in of, of age to this scenario, maybe you still have to work a little bit. Maybe you retirement or don't have a retirement or Social Security is not going to cut it. And of course, there's people who have been through divorces and things like that. That uh, You know, the numbers are different for everybody. But what a wonderful way to get into a comfortable house, a community where you have people that watch one, you know, you kind of become family. The communities have so much to offer where right now I have a pool, but hey, it'd be great to have a community pool I don't have to be responsible for. Because when a pump breaks, I got to fix it. <laughs> when a pump breaks at the community, <laughs> the community pays for it. Uh, it's really something to consider. And uh, then your combination of maybe a park model and a motorhome where you travel a little bit during the uh, summer months because it's hot here. And when it starts getting kind of yucky uh, in the weather up north and places like that, I'll bail back here to uh, Arizona, put your RV in storage and stay in your park model and uh, have a base. So uh, I, I, I highly recommend that if you get a chance, get on YouTube and just do, uh, uh, Arizona is a great place to start, is uh, uh, uh park model living in Arizona and look at the communities, look at some of the stories and uh, then come down and visit. And of course, if you already have an RV, come down to Arizona and go to some of these resorts because they let RVs in too. They have spaces for RVs, but you'll find these mega resorts are probably 70% park models. And you'll probably find out why really quick, how uh, the responsibility of less property, less overhead, uh, fits within your budget, gives you extra money in your pocket. Uh, it's a really good thing to consider. And it's no laughing matter. And how you feel about things right now could be totally different 10 or 15 years from now. And so many of us, and I've been around the corporate people where they they literally are trying to get enough retirement money to equal what they're making that you know, as they are right then and there. And you may as well just not plan on retiring. <laughs> you can live on less. You have to change your lifestyle a little bit. But uh, uh, it takes a little research. It takes a little bit of opening your mind, realizing life can be different than what you're living today. And, uh, yeah, um, get on, get start doing some research. Get on the... YouTube, start or go to some blogs and read some blogs about retirement living in communities. And uh, you'll, you may find yourself in a very good s situation where you can live very comfortably and the money that you're making from your retirement income actually have enough to live on and do stuff. <laughs> and and your medical costs are going to go up too and stuff you know, going to happen. You want to be able to pay those bills instead of considering a bankruptcy. So food for thought. Just thought I'd bring that up. We love our dogs, and yet there is pet waste. We know we have to pick it up, but can we make it convenient? Can they make a bag that's large enough for all size dogs? Can they make it wide? Can they make it deeper? Can he put handles on it so it's so easy to reverse and tie? That bag has been created. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. They're eco-friendly, strong, and biodegradable. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags were designed for you, 
the dog owner. But are they cost effective? Yes, they're under $10. Go to Amazon.com right now or RangerRobPoopyBags.com and get a box today. Our bags are high quality and lemon scented. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, it's what we asked for. Make picking up dog waste easy with Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Well, we are back and I uh, I want to take the time to talk about uh, the dark side of RVing. And the reason is I, during the time that I did my last module to this one, I watched two videos in a row of pretty popular channels of nightmare stories. So the first one, I don't think I had to say their names or anything. The first one was, and they're both in Arizona. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to bring them up. So apparently one group, um, a, a couple and a kid, decided to go from courtside over to, I guess they're heading over to New Mexico. And you need to remember that this is December, January. It's January now. And it's wintertime. Not in, not in Arizona, but... Anywhere you go in the United States at this point in time, if if you're climbing elevation, this is common sense in Oregon, Washington, whatever. If you're going to go in, up in elevation, that means it gets colder. That means either, well, if it's going to, if it's raining here, it's snow and higher elevations. You should not be driving an RV in higher elevations during the winter. <laughs> it's It can be done, but it's not safe, and it's definitely uh, stressful. And, of course, some folks decided to do that, and I think the motivation was they didn't have water in their RV when they start, stopped at a casino up, um, uh, let's say it's more of the Flagstaff area. And my answer to that is go to the store and buy bottled water and write it out because they were waiting for a wind wind warning to go away and they needed to hang out and I guess their motivation to keep moving was they didn't have any water and uh, it's like go buy water (laughs) go buy a couple of gallons I know there has to be stores that sell bottled water so anyway uh, uh, the, the message to take away from all this is uh, sometimes, maybe if you're in other states and stuff, why you would think things would not apply that are common sense in weather? One is wind is dangerous. Two, elevations means colder. <laughs> this is how it is. That's why when it's summertime here, it's really hot. We all head up to Flagstaff and Page and up to all the cooler areas because they're higher elevations. So keep that in mind when you're traveling, guys. Wintertime elevation means ice colder could be snow. Com- there's a that's common sense. The second video I watched and just got done watching it is, uh, and these are both popular channels, really nice people. Um, super nice. I met one of them and the other ones I haven't met, but they seem to be pretty nice people. And, uh, they're traveling lower Arizona towards the border and went to a, uh, RV park right along the border, right by our nuclear plant. And what they didn't know that is, uh, and they signed up for a month. That's what was surprising is, um, uh, you know, if you're just coming in for a week or something like that, I understand. But when you sign up for a month, you really should do your homework. But, um, uh, yeah, and good prices usually means there's something you need to know about. <laughs> And uh, you get what you pay for. Anyway, it turns out they're uh, across the street from a chicken farm and uh, uh, a nuclear power plant, which shouldn't matter, uh, about six miles away. And uh, But anyway, it, they were inundated with flies. And uh, flies can be little pesky little buggers uh, in Arizona once in a while, but not in the magnitude that they had it. Oh, my gosh. It was terrible. And, uh, yeah, I mean, no matter what you paid, it sounds like they managed to get some of the refund from their one month, uh, purchase, but, and, and that's good. But, uh, you know, there was a no, uh, refund policy there. And anyway, the bottom line is they just should have bugged out. And, uh, sounds like they finally did after six or seven days. 
So yeah, um, wow. So there's the bottom line is um, if you're traveling, just remember that you own nothing but your RV. And that's kind of one of the reasons why we like a home base is, um, and, and, you know, in an RV, if you're in a place you don't like, you, they always say, then move. Uh, and, you know, that's depending on your finances and things like that. But it could be difficult sometimes, too. And even if you get an RV park that's halfway decent, but your neighbors suck, even that can be hard to, to say, well, I'm going to move because you paid for where you're at. And the bottom line, you own nothing. That property is not yours. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was one of the one things that bothered me and Sherry when we were traveling is, uh, yeah, it's great to have this freedom and driving and seeing all these great places, but I don't own anything. I mean, as soon as I walk outside my RV, it's not mine. And it's, I have to abide by everybody else's rules. And one stupid little thing I might do, like I put a pool out once for Cinder to cool off in the really hot weather and got a complaint from the manager because this is well it attracts wildlife at nighttime. We shouldn't have pools because of javelinas and stuff like that. Understandable, but at the same time, it's like, uh, we're just trying to keep our dogs cooled off. Um, anyway, uh, that was one of the times I'm kind of going, gosh, I wish I had my own place. And fixing you know just like when you say pick up and move well we fixed our solution by creating a base anyway but uh yeah I just realize it's not all peaches and cream out there uh that's why i do appreciate uh rv channels taking the time to show a good or a bad day uh you know it's just like travel channels like i was telling you uh, people up in Mex down in Mexico do some uh, travel channels too and stuff. But they say, you know, the one thing I know that we don't show you is like we might drive to a little city to go show it to you. But um, we didn't show you the, that it took us five hours to go 25 miles because we we're stuck in tr uh, four hours of traffic. And you don't see that part. And uh, so it's really important on travel channels, I think, is to try their best to show the... Uh, issues that can come along with traveling and of, of course when people are doing travel channels you know they're trying their best to show the different places that they're at so they tend to only you know videotape and make their videos to show the nicer areas and of course uh, when we make videos they really people don't like the videos to be more than 10 or 15 minutes long so really you're just showing the good parts of where you're at um, it's important to analyze and look at the whole picture if you're thinking about getting into uh, RVing and doing traveling is uh, do you have the patience for it do you have can you turn the other cheek once in a while can you deal with um, funny and weird situations you may get into like the first story I was telling you about they there's much more to that story and uh, there's a few maneuvers that they did that really got them stressed out and uh the other thing is if you have a job that depends on the internet um that is, that's a driver and in the first case scenario their motivation was water but the other motivation was they had to have internet uh because uh you know the, they do uh, virtual work telecommuting type stuff and uh so that was really important to them to a point that they put themselves in almost danger in a sense um, uh, or insecurity, insecure situation that's not preferable. Let's put it that way. And once again, these people are super nice people. And Sherry and I had times where we're going, how did this happen? <laughs> and it's just nothing but plain old bad day. And... Uh, uh, one of the quotes I heard was, some of us, yeah, we've been doing this for three, four years now and quite experienced at it, and yet we can still have bad days. And that's very true. No matter how experienced you are, uh, stuff happens. And uh, when you're new, you probably have a little bit more stuff happen. And then you kind of question, why in the hell did I do this in the first place? So keep in mind, uh, when it comes to RV parks, do your research, especially if it's one that you're going to stay uh, longer periods of time at. Really dig into the reviews is uh, one of the things that they emphasize. The other folks there is uh, 
I don't know why they didn't admit the fact that why did they stay in higher elevations to go over to uh, New Mexico? I'm sure they had good reason, but if you would have stayed in the lower valley and shot over there in that direction and worked your way up, you probably would have had better weather and better uh, highway conditions. And, uh, uh, of course, you know, it's always hindsight's always, <laughs> you know, how that goes. But uh, once again, they're great people. Um, I feel for them. I do appreciate that they actually put out videos that really told a, a story of uh, a, a bad a bad day or a bad travel day or a bad uh, RV experience. And uh, uh, I know, yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. The folks with the RV experience, uh, RV park experience, is. Uh, uh, you do want to let other people know that there's a bad scenario coming up and you should give them a warning either uh, through the reviews. And also if you're a channel, uh, do realize that these people are business owners too, but if there's just a bad business, we need to let them let people know. So, uh, yeah, I, I command them. Both of them, uh, handled the scenarios, right? They, uh, made you know they suggested the mistakes that they made and uh, in in some cases even no better in some scenarios and uh stuff happens and people are people we're only human so yeah keep that in mind if you're becoming an RVer well guys i don't know if this really pertains to RV or not but you know there's something that just drives me crazy at this age is how many people uh, get so used to using texting and messaging that they literally don't, are afraid or, or to confront people on a phone or, or with voice or one-on-one. -on -one. And I really think that's becoming a problem. And I have an example is I have someone that would contacted me about one of our shows we're running and all that stuff, and they uh, wanted to make a request. And I, I, and I don't understand why and stuff. So I just wrote in there, just give me a call. We'll talk about it. And they refused. And I've never had any, any beefs with these people, nor have I ever. They wanted to text. They were afraid to confront me. And uh, I've never, uh, there's never been a scenario where they couldn't confront me, nor would I belittle anybody. Uh, I may be firm about something I uh, pertains to my business and why I won't do something, but I certainly would still be respectful and never hang up on a person or yell at a person. Um, but I, what I'm finding is so many people now are afraid to confront or even communicate one-on-one -on -one anymore. And, and of course, everybody's so brave when they're behind uh, texting, email, messaging. Um, you do not act and I know this for a fact that people do not act like a normal human being when you're not looking at somebody eye to eye or talking to them, at least on the phone, voice to voice. Uh, we're losing that. And that's not healthy. And even if you have an issue and stuff, you really got to just take a deep breath and you know, and uh, pick up that phone and and find out that Either, you know, you might have, it's hard to put in the words and through email and stuff, uh, feelings, emotions, uh, concerns, and things like that. Um, learn to talk to people one-on-one -on -one again. Pick up the phone and talk or go visit someone or use Skype. Look at them, eye, you know, eye to eye. And uh, you'll find sometimes you can resolve things easier. Two, you might understand each other's issues a little bit, or you find out someone's being devious really quick. So, yeah, it's an old skill and one I'm not willing to give up, and I certainly hope it's not one that you want to give up. Well, guys, Hello, in the future, everyone. I thought I'd uh, take the time to, since uh, we have all these mega resorts around our uh, area here. I thought it'd be kind of interesting, and I'm trying not to be one-sided. I want to be, hear both sides of the story. 
thought it'd be interesting to interview some people that live in some of these um, park models and find out the pros and cons of what it's like living in those and what they like about them and what they don't like about them. I think one of the biggest areas I'd be concerned about is pets. What's what's the ins and outs of having pets? I think most of them are pet friendly but um, are limited to size. Uh, that would probably be my biggest concern uh, about living in a place like that. But uh, um, some people say, well, I don't like the idea I don't own the land. And uh, that could be an issue. So is it better to get a place that you own the, the lot or is it better to have a place that you can rent? Because remember, those actually can be moved. So somebody might buy your unit but put it in a different uh, resort. And uh, that's a... a possibility too. So uh, I want to I want to ask those questions and I want to find out if you happen to be listening to this and own a park model, uh, please uh, contact us either through the comments or go to our Facebook page and just uh, message us. And uh, maybe we can uh, either interview you at your location or on the phone. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. I also want to remind people and I, I know I repeat this on every show how to find uh, RV Talk Radio, and uh, one is uh, we are syndicated on Good Talk Radio, which is a full-time radio station which plays on on the weekends. Um, this show on the weekends around uh, mid-afternoon, uh, or you can go to Spreaker and uh, type in. Uh, actually, you could probably talk in our type in RV Talk Radio. I haven't tried that yet, but if you go to Cutting Edge Radio Network, you'll find a lot of our shows that we syndicate there, and uh, all the episodes are available to you there. Or you can just go uh, to uh, uh, like Podcast Attic or something like that and put on your phone, and you just go into the search search section, tell it to search iTunes or TuneIn, um, and uh, type in RV Talk Radio, and you'll be able to find the show there. So anytime a new episode gets uploaded, it automatically, uh, 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 sometimes you have to run a refresh on your software to check for new episodes. Uh, but yeah, they're there. So yeah, uh, we're also on iHeartRadio, Spotify, uh, some other ones. I can't remember all the names. But yeah, there's lots of ways to listen to RV Talk Radio. If you happen to have a, uh, a, a channel of your own or a blog or something or a business pertaining to uh, RV travel or lifestyles, uh, please, um, we've helped a lot of channels get started and build up their numbers. Um, and if it's something that's helpful to our listeners, we'd be happy to have you on the show. Just contact us once again, either you can uh, email me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com or go to our Facebook page and just message us. And uh, yeah, just uh, let us know what you have in mind and see if we can work something out. And we could interview you by phone, by Skype, or in person if you happen to be in Arizona. So I hope that was uh, helpful to you. So yeah, let's move on. Well, I find it quite humorous and sometimes... Uh, insane but impressive at the same time all those words come to mind when i hear the different uh channels and, and organizations talking about solar and i actually heard some good advice which is actually some advice we actually gave uh it was a channel once again a popular uh, channel and they were at uh at the uh, uh court site and uh they were recommended um that they had a generator in their fifth wheel and uh the type of boondocking that they did which was only for short periods of time that just having good batteries uh in a generator uh can would be just sufficient for what they want to do uh in our case we do that but we do have an 85 watt solar panel on the top of our rv that kind of does a trickle uh, uh charge on our batteries uh, but the one thing I think I would change in our fifth wheel is going from regular batteries to lithiums and uh, because it, uh, they're just so, so much more efficient. And uh, so I think that's one of the goals I have with ours is I like our setup. I like the fact that we just have a small one panel on the top of our RV 
Uh, we have an inverter when we need to uh, um, on the back uh, for our entertainment system. So we have a thousand watt inverter for that. However, that really drains batteries fast. Having lithium would probably be a really good deal. Two, uh, two six volt lithiums, I think they make those. Uh, that would be a perfect scenario for us. So my point to this whole thing is uh, all these imp videos that are so impressed with all these interesting uh, uh, solar panel setups and inverters and all that stuff, uh, really ask yourself, what are you going to do for boondocking? Uh, if you're just doing two, three, four days at a time and then going back to parks and stuff like that, there's no reason to invest that kind of money. Um, and it's just one more thing to break. Uh, but uh, if you want something like I like... It's nice I have a trickle charger on your batteries if you're stirring your RV too. That way your batteries, uh, I have it. When our RV was brand new before we put a system in, uh, I somehow I managed to have dead batteries and I couldn't even get the hydraulics to work to get it onto my truck. And I had to jump, <laughs> literally take jumpers from my truck to the batteries of the RV and start the generator and get everything charged up before I could even move the RV up and down on the, uh, on the lifters because I had no power. And having a trickle charger, that 85 watt uh, solar panel at the top, keeps my batteries charged up even in storage. So uh, that is something I really, really appreciate having. And it happened more than once where I had my RV in storage for like a month, month and a half. I don't know what was draining the battery, but I would have dead batteries and the hydraulics would not work. And so, uh, but anyway, um, uh, but then you got to ask yourself about generators. Like uh, fifth wheels is really easy to get built in ones and they're really, really quiet. I have a 5,500 and uh, it's a uh, propane one and I've been very happy with that. Uh, other people just buy the, the mobile ones like the Hondas and Yamahas and stuff like that. And uh, they, they work fine, but uh, they're a little bit louder, I think. But And then sometimes you can get other ones that are even louder, but better priced. And so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, really think that over before you invest so much money into solar. A minor solar system can really be helpful just for little things and just keeping that batteries topped off, uh, especially if they store you store your RV at all. But yeah, keep that in mind when you're buying solar. The other simple product I wanted to bring up, and I brought this up in episodes way back, is uh, putting um, spacers on your uh, hydraulics, uh, your levelers. And a lot of people get these really fancy plastic ones and stuff like that. And uh, uh, I prefer, and I still to this day, prefer good old wood. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I got scrap wood inside a house and you get all these weird pieces of wood. But I'm telling you, the easiest way to get some really good spacer blocks for your lifters is, uh, or your levelers, um, is go to Home Depot or Lowe's. Go buy a full piece of, uh, I like four by sixes and, uh, and get a brand new one. Get a pressure treated one if you want and have them cut it right there to the size you want, like a foot and a half. Um, and, you know, measure out uh, how many you can get out of one uh, one full uh, piece of wood. Uh, you might have to buy two and have them cut them right there, put them, in, <laughs> put them in the grocery cart, and there you go. You got these nice, new, treated, uh, not rotting away, consistent sized um blocks of wood and maybe you might want to get some maybe oh one by fours or one by sixes uh, a little thinner so you can make minor adjustments uh if you're really in an unlevel area uh and put less impact on your hydraulics uh get some smaller ones to use as spacers um in case uh you just get in a weird place you guys know what i talk about when you're RVing every once in a while you go Oh, this one, this area is a little higher than the other. It'd be kind of nice if I had a spacer and my one hydraulic doesn't have to go higher than the other. Uh, I prefer to do that, but most hydraulics are fine that way. Uh, I also like to build up my blocks so my hydraulics don't have to extend so far. Um, and I had a funny thing happen last year where 
uh, we left the RV up in um, uh, Bend, Oregon, and we came back, and one of the slides actually popped out a little bit, about four or five inches. And unfortunately, Sherry's father didn't notice that, but um, I kind of figured one of my hydraulics kind of burped a little bit. And I noticed that I had my hydraulics extended quite a ways to keep that level. So before we left, uh, no damage was done or anything like that. Uh, I put more blocks under the RV where it's at today. So my levelers only had to come out a little ways to level out the RV and put less stress on the hydraulics and also just in case I've got a little air in the lines or something like that, that I don't have one of my slides do a little burp and pop out a little bit. Uh, that would not be good. And luckily, I kind of told uh, Sherry's dad to keep an eye out. So he goes out and inspects it and makes sure none of my slides burped or, or popped out. I didn't know. I've never seen that happen before, but it happened to us. And I kind of blame it. And maybe I had the hydraulics uh, kind of maxed out a little bit and there might have been a little air in the lines or something like that. And maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know. But uh, I'm not having I've not had any trouble yet. And when we go back up there, we'll see if I have any uh, where my sl one of my slides might have popped out a little bit because uh, they're all hydraulic slides. So I don't know. It's a uh, it's always a battle. There's always something to take care of. Always people out there want to spend money. Uh, uh, for us, is uh, our RV's been doing fine. I hate having it sit so much. This year, I think I'm going to get it detailed and waxed and uh, cleaned up really good down at the RV park that we take it down to right by Sherry's folks. And we usually, as soon as we get there, shake it out, maybe spend a night on it. Next morning, we take it to an RV park, get it on the hookups, get all the systems running, just run the air conditioner, run all the systems, make sure nothing's broken, everything's working good, chase away any critters that might have got in there. We, hopefully, and this year, what I was telling you in the show before, we're going to put mint in all kinds of places in the RV to prevent, uh, I guess those, those mice just hate mint and boy, what a terrible thing to walk into your RV and have it smell like mint, huh? <laughs> so, uh, I think that's a great way to go instead of putting traps or anything like that. So who wants a dead mouse and you're sitting in your RV for a couple of months before you go back on it? That can't be very healthy. So, uh, uh, yeah. Um, just want to kind of bring that up. I thought it was kind of important. And of course, being a cheapskate, I'm telling you, the best way to go is go to go to Home Depot and get get your blocks made that way. You'll you'll be happy with them, and they'll be nice and clean and nice and, uh, you know, not. <laughs> I've seen people using spacers like, how long have you been using those? They're rotting, you know. So, uh, you know, when you get in weather and, and rain and all that stuff, they're gonna. It's not that expensive to replace them. Just go to Home Depot and get a new set. And you got and the old ones, well, build a fire. And one of the last things I wanted to bring up is uh, RVs in general. So many channels are out there. Not all of them, but a lot of channels are out there. And uh, it seems like they keep putting an emphasis on being that you have to uh, downgrade your lifestyle. I mean, you can have an RV, but then you go for cheap, 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 uh, cheap places to park, cheap places to eat, cheap places to buy things, cheap ways to get your energy and water and things like cheap, 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 which is nothing wrong with trying to save money. I mean, don't get me wrong, but I want to also send a message out there is you can RV and live a lavish, a nice lavish lifestyle. Uh, RVs today are just awesome, and uh, and you know the real fancy ones do cost a pretty penny, but uh, uh, not everybody's trying to live on a you know a tight tight budget, and so I I don't want the impression that like if you're an RVer you're going to have to be a super minimalist and I can only eat at McDonald's and stay at Walmart's and stuff like that and. That's not true at all. And in fact, the people that don't do videos, which is about 90% of our viewers, do not make radio podcasts and, and do videos like I'm doing. I'm far from being a well-to-do person. Um, and uh, they're living not only in a lavish or a really comfortable RV, which you can still get at a reasonable price in the house, and staying at resorts that are just being kind of pampered and they got all the amenities and 
clubs and hobbies and friends and uh, going golfing and stuff like that. So uh, I, I want to make sure that you know that there watch RV channels out there too that, hey, there's people that make good incomes or have good retirement incomes or made good investments or have very uh, uh, good businesses where they can go RVing and just check in. And uh, live a very lavish, and, and some in the RV parks are five star, and uh, you know under behind security security gates and the whole works, and uh, you can live a very nice lifestyle and still have the option to travel to all kinds of places and uh, still have all the amenities that you had in your oh, three, four, five, seven thousand square foot house. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and it's and it's not something I can do. But uh, uh, I would say we live middle class with me and Sherry. But uh, just because you're watching these videos where they're just constantly uh, trying to find cheap places to stay, and and a lot of times they're boondocking because they don't want to pay for RV parks, and uh, you know that isn't how it is. Uh, a large probably the majority of RVers out there are comfortable. They're in resorts. They're enjoying life. They have all the amenities, bells and whistles, and community, and safety, and the whole works. And it's a wonderful lifestyle. And especially when you're getting our age. And I've been kind of focusing a little bit more the, the last two shows on folks that are uh, retiring and getting ready to figure out what to do at the retirement age that Maybe uh, you're going to have to live on less money than you did before, but you still like to live the kind of lifestyle you had when you're making full paychecks. And so there is some good options out there with RVing and full timing in park models. And so I wanted to kind of put a couple of shows out there just to put more emphasis on living a really nice lifestyle and keeping your overhead down. Uh, allowing you to do things like going out the nice dinners and going golfing and maybe visit casinos and 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 uh, pay for uh, tours and maybe fly to different places uh, and take that extra money and play go play. So I hope all this has been helpful to you and hopefully it's also been kind of realistic to you and uh, um, that's kind of what we're all about. So. I want to thank you very much for listening. Check us out on Good Talk Radio. Don't forget to buy your Ranger Rob poopy bags. Uh, I guarantee you'll like them. And it helps our channel. Uh, please take the time if you want to give us some support or go to our Patreon. That helps our channel too. And it helps not just this show, but all of our other things that we do. So once again, go get yourself an RV. Be safe and enjoy life. Till next time. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.